And that uh, we're going to go into uh, the QDB section. So this is where some of the more interesting things are happening. So what is this doing, right? So what this is doing is the UI that we just saw is more focused towards somebody who is a Kubernetes, Kubernetes expert, or right, somebody is an advanced user, like DevOps engineer or necessary, who knows a lot of things and they are using that. But how about, what, what if, you know, you have a, uh, uh, you know, a front-end engineer on your team or somebody who is not really like into the details of Kubernetes, but still wants to use a product like KubeDB uh, without having to know all the details. And, and this UI is kind of focused towards them, right? So here we are not really talking about the details of Kubernetes or the YAMLs, but more talking about in the context of a database, right? So uh, if you when you come to this UI, the first thing you'll see that you know it selects a uh, cluster. Uh, so this uh, you know here we have this ACE cluster. I mean we're going to use this Hello cluster because that has all the sort of necessary credentials and everything pre-configured. So when you go there, uh, first you see the overview page. Here you see the different types of databases that we have. And the ones uh, that has been uh, recently running. Uh, so we have a bunch of MongoDB databases running here, but the other databases also work. Uh, so with that, uh, if you go to one of the individual pages, then it will just show you that, that database uh, view. Okay, so now, uh, we can click on this plus button here, or you can click on this new instance, but essentially once you click on this, uh, it will uh, take you to this page, create a new instance. So you can now create all of these databases, right? And let's say we click on MongoDB. So once you click on this, it will load sort of a wizard or a, like a form uh, where you can use to sort of create a database. So this is all uh, loaded dynamically and it is possible to pre-configure or customize some of the predefined values. Uh, in the demo today, we're not going to go into some of those details because we only have so much time, but uh, I'll kind of walk you through how this works, right? So you have a MongoDB, you want to, as a, you know, a front-end engineer, you want to create a MongoDB, right? So you just do uh, Mongo uh, MGD, right? Let's say Mongo demo, right? So MGD, give it a namespace. So we'll go with the demo namespace. You can create other ones, it's all good. Um, and then let's pick a version, this one, 4.4.6, right? It's not the most latest, but it's pretty close. Uh, you can give it some uh, labels, uh, our annotation custom ones, if you want. So let's go with the standalone, but you can also create a replica set uh, you can you know, set the replica numbers and all that. Uh, so if we do a standalone database, uh, yeah, so by default, it's kind of going with the 10 GB, but you can set uh, you know, bigger storage uh, amount, whatever you want. For the storage class, you know, this is on a Linode cluster. So we're just automatically taking the, uh, the storage classes that are available here, right? So this is coming live from the cluster. So let's pick this one. And then what is the termination policy? You know, there's like a bunch of those. Uh, we'll go with the wipeout as a default one. So meaning once you delete, it will delete everything. The database auth secret, right? So by default, it will generate a new one, but uh, you can provide a password, right? So it will generate a new secret, but you can provide the actual value that is used in the password if you, if you want that. Or if you just let keep it blank, so it will automatically generate the, even the password, not just the secret, but also the fields in the password itself. Or if you have an existing secret, uh, existing secret for MongoDB, you can pick that, right? So we have actually a bunch of those because uh, we created some other databases, but we're going to just go with the uh, generate auth secret, right? So what do you typically do in a YAML? And then the machine profile, this is the bit where we want to set the resource for this database, like the CPU and memory amount. Now by default, uh, you can, uh, you know, so if you want a custom, you just write whatever you like, right? So you type whatever you like, right? This is essentially their resource YAMLs. Or you can, what we did is essentially we looked at what there are there uh, out there in sort of the various cloud providers like AWS and kind of took those size uh, names and essentially uh, if you pick those, then it will create a database with that amount of resources, right? So if you do say micro, then it essentially typically means a 500 uh, milli uh, CPU and one GB memory, 
right? So we can go with the custom and take the default values. I mean, it's essentially the same thing really, it just looks a little different. When you create the database, uh, we want to turn on alerting because you already have Prometheus enabled in this cluster. So basically the various, like even if your database pods are down and things like that, it will automatically uh, send you alerts, right? So what it, this feature will do, if you turn on the enable alerts, will that it will uh, create a Prometheus rule YAML so that those uh, alerts uh, will go to this cluster, right? Sorry, the Prometheus uh, that you have set up in this cluster, right? So to do that, we need to know the label that will be required to, uh, so that the Prometheus or the alert manager can actually see these uh, Prometheus rules. So this is the label, uh, since we are using the default sort of the Q Prometheus, so it's already pre-configured here. You can, you know, kind of go and edit those, right? Change it, whatever you like, but we, we don't need to change it today. Uh, same with the monitoring, right? So this, if you want to turn it on, it will turn on, enable a, create a service monitor and the service monitor will have this label. So with that, once we go into the preview, so this is all the information you need to know, right? You don't need to know any, any of the very complicated details. So if you are on a replicated or a sharded cluster, then you can kind of see, right? You have to just provide a storage class, number of shards, you know, size of the storage of, for those shards and the config server storage and, and number of the mongoes, right? So config, so this is kind of all that's out there, right? You need to provide this and that's it. Or same with replica set. You give it a replica set name, you can keep the default name, give it the number of replicas and, and, and you know, just a storage size, that's it. So let's start, go with the standalone, uh, just so that it gets uh, running quickly. Uh, so let's go to the preview. Once you go into the preview, So, so the way it's done is we're always going to show you that YAML that's going to essentially get applied in this cluster now, right? If you kind of almost like doing a kubectl apply. So, um, you know, obviously you can manually copy it from here. Like you can use this UI as a sort of the generator for this YAMLs, like, you know, all the sort of the, how this is working. Uh, uh, but uh, once you, uh, and then manually apply it, right? I mean, same with the corresponding uh, Prometheus rule, which will be applied to enable those alerts. So we're going to just go and do it from the UI directly, right? So we're going to say deploy. I think we need to go back. I think there's a for the standalone, this field is not correctly set up. So these are some of the sort of the kinks we are working out uh, right now uh, with the new UI. So yeah, so now it's a standalone and has a replica one. So we deploy. So now this deployed and then it's back to the MongoDB sort of the overview page. And as you can see that we had like a three other Mongos already deployed, but then this one is now in a provisioning state. So this page will automatically refresh uh, every several seconds. So let's just wait a few seconds uh, for it to get provisioned. So you saw that it just got like a updated one time. And as we wait, we can look at sort of the UI, right? So these are the sort of the kind of, you know, the standard sort of the, if you did, did like a kubectl get M, uh, MG in your cluster directly, like the information that you would see kind of is a version of that is visible here. Uh, so here uh, we see the CPU, uh, these are the request and limits, memory, same thing, request and limits. So we make sure that the request and limit are same, same with storage, right? So that's what's there. Uh, as this thing is happening, we can also sort of jump into the uh, terminal, right? So this is, uh, I'll go to the terminal here and uh, you can take a look at the demo namespace. Interesting. 
no, this is now running, right? So that, that error is actually for some backup operations. We can ignore that for now. Uh, yeah, so as you can see that this MGD, the one we just created is now in a ready state. Uh, and if we go back to this UI, you can also see that it's already medically updated, right? So it's now ready. So now let's get inside the UI. So this is uh, what you see here. So it's a, a quick view of sort of the information that you would need to connect to this database. We have you know, plans to improve this further, but what you see on the top today is kind of see the cluster name, which is running, like you can see it here too. The version of the database, it's standalone. And this is the request limit for CPU memory and storage the status is ready. As you can see that this is not exposed. I mean, maybe we should change it. Basically, this is not exposed to the internet, right? So it's not a, a load port or a load balancer type of service. Right? It just has a cluster IP. Uh, so so the, we consider, consider that as a safe, right? So that's why it's kind of green tick mark. It has a monitoring enable, so that's why it doesn't have a backup configured right now. It doesn't have TLS configured, right? So those are red. Uh, now this cluster, we, so this database we just created, right? So they just created, and uh, so on the left hand side you we can see some of the uh, credential information, right? Uh, uh, the secret that's there. Uh, so we have plans to sort of improve this further so that you can essentially see like a connection URL or something that you can just copy and paste and use it with the application or something like that. But today it's just uh, relatively showing a little bit of detailed information. And this part is actually also coming from the this the newly created Mongo directly. So um, it is showing you the number of current connections, uh, the, the total number of connections, active connections, total, you know, the total number of collections, which is the I guess the tables in kind of Mongo word, and then index size. These are in bytes. Uh, so so that's the information that's there. I mean, this is a uncharted, it's a single standalone Mongo. So the number of shards are unknown and all that. If you had a, if it was a sharded MongoDB, you'd see that data here, right? So this is coming live from there. So these are the graphs that uh, we talked about before, right? So we have the uh, Grafana that is hosted here. So this, so this dashboards that you are seeing, these are also live updating, right? So as you can see this kind of quick updates every, uh, I forget, I think it's on 30 seconds or something, it updates, uh, that's what I set it up. Uh, so this will automatically update and you'll see the graph uh, move forward. So these are some of the kind of the basic stuff, right? Like the CPU, current memory, um, and disk. And these are all coming from the Prometheus server that is deployed in your cluster, right? So the dashboard is hosted on our end, but the data is coming from your cluster. This is all live and, and follows all the encryption and authentication and all of that stuff. And then at the bottom, you can see the nodes. So these nodes are actually not the Kubernetes nodes. These are the Kubernetes pods. And here we see that they, we have only one pod here. So uh, so in this pod, uh, yeah, you can see that uh, we see the usage and limit, right? So this is the interesting thing. Here we are not looking at uh, the request limit, but the actual usage, the current value. So basically we are making a query to the Prometheus and getting the data and showing you that. So, so this is just a, you know, just a new deployment. So it is not really using, doing much. So it's not using much CPU. It is not using much memory. Uh, it has a lot of storage available, right? Uh, and, and as you see, it's also gets updated, for, uh, you know, every, um, I think on 30 seconds or something. Um, so it's frequently gets updated or refreshed, I would say. Uh, so we can uh, click on this pod name. Uh, if we do that, then we'll see uh, some pod specific data, right? So this is the sort of a simpler version of that data that we saw. I mean, frankly, we are looking for your feedback also so that uh, we can further simplify these UIs, right? So our goal is to make it such that, uh, you know, you don't have to be a Kubernetes expert to use Kubernetes or KubeDB or any of that, right? You just want the database, you get it, you use it, and that's about it, right? So simplify life. Uh, so we'll probably simplify some of these pages, but you know, it's our sort of, you know, kind of pretty, pretty early version, but it's what's possible, right? Just showing some of that. Uh, so we haven't configured any backups, so it's not there. Uh, we haven't configured, uh, actually we have configured monitoring. That's why you saw the data. So. So the service monitors and links are available here. Uh, right now, uh, this is not all linked to the console part, but we'll, we'll link up those also. 
So now if we go back, this MongoD we just created, right? So this was the overview page and then we can go in the database insights. So it has a little bit more data, right? So some of the insights that you saw at the top right corner is also visible here again. But then this also has information on slow query. So right now, the only, only query that is running is actually sort of the health checker that we run from the QTB operator uh, every 10 seconds. That's, that's what's showing up, right? If you click on this, you can see the actual query that is running. Uh, so it's, it's uh, you know, it's not much right now, but so it's, yeah, just do that. And then uh, you can also look at the top collections, right? So the number of uh, tables or collections you have in the database, you can sort them to see you know, the size of them. These are all in bytes, uh, but this also gets updated uh, you know, periodically or refreshed. And then uh, the interesting part is that for this particular database, we have some Grafana dash dashboard pre-configured. I mean, you actually saw some of that in the overview page. So if we click on this, it will take you to that pages. Um, so if I click on this, it will just open into a different tab. And, and this is the, as you can see, this is also on our hosted Grafana by that particular version for this database, right? That's running on your cluster and, and you see the data. And uh, yeah, so, it, you know, it, because it is connecting to this remote Prometheus, it, it takes a bit uh, time to load, but once loaded, you know, it gets refreshed frequently. So, you know, you, you have access to the data. It's not uh, that bad. Um, and uh, uh, so this is something, uh, another thing that we have uh, to look into. So, so this is the uh, pod specific data. Uh, so once we deploy it, I mean, actually we have to add some flags there, something we'll look into that. But once have, you have the exporter flag added, you'll see the pod specific data also. Uh, and as you can see, this is, you know, this is pretty much the standard uh, dashboard that uh, we have provided you before. So you can, you know, go and change other stuff, but the nice thing is that this takes you to the correct UI directly. You don't have to know about a lot of details because this gets a lot over time, you know, just a lot of things to know to use something. Uh, and now, uh, and then we saw the backups. I mean, you don't have any backups now, so it will be all blank. Uh, and then the operations, right? So this is the uh, QDB ops request that uh, is possible. So uh, before I get into more of this, I'll just quickly go into the sort of the console UI so that you can kind of see what's happening there, right? So if you were in the Hello cluster, go to the data store, go to the MongoDB, and uh, we go to the MongoD, the MGD that, that we just created, right? Um, so that's the one. And here, uh, you know, we kind of have a lot more information. So, uh, so you have the Mongo version, the stateful set, the pods, the services. Uh, you know, we have here three services, right? That there's the primary service, this is the, the stateful set governing service, and this is the state, uh, the Prometheus service that, that we create. So the Prometheus can collect the data, right? The exporter can collect data. Uh, yeah, actually, the, the, this is the service that is used to expose the exporter, right? That's the stat service. And then the auth secret, and here everything is connected. So you know, if you click on this, you can go to the uh, auth name. I clicked on the name of the secret. I can go to the secret page uh, and I can see the data, right? So the username is root, uh, password is, this is it, right? So we can just copy it and use it on that. Now, uh, some of the more interesting thing is uh, here, uh, we also have this client config, uh, connections, which is essentially the app binding, right? If you are familiar with QDB, you know that we create this app binding, which has all the, the service name, the secret name, all as a single object. And, and this is what that is. And you can also see it from this breadcrumb that's, that's kind of reflected here. You can go to the resource definition in the YAML and you can see all the details, right, as always. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, uh, if we go back to the UI, some of the more interesting stuff will be if we go to the port section, we have a, a single port. Now, uh, we can do a couple of things here, right? So we can look at the log for this port. So this is on your cluster remotely. The server is hosted at our end. 
click on this first button, uh, the log button, you can hover, you can see this is a port log. So this is now showing you the uh, live log that is coming from your, this particular port. So, so yeah, so, and, and this is all like a, by default it follows, right? So it will automatically keep updating here uh, or refreshing. Uh, yeah, so you can see, you know, the namespace and all of that. Uh, the other thing is like, let's say, we want to exec into this pod, that is also possible, right? So if we go back here and there's the second uh, button here, uh, if you click on that, that will open a terminal into this pod. So it is using BNSH, uh, you know, uh, if you have a different, I mean, this is something we cannot know ahead of time. So, uh, so we kind of provide both options, whatever works in the particular case. So, so you can see that this is the, uh, the MongoDB pod, the database pod that's actually running here, right? So uh, if we do PS, yeah, so if we do PSAUX, you can see all the running processes and uh, this is the MongoDB process that's running under the MongoD process that's running under the MongoDB user, right? So uh, you can essentially use the Mongo CLI to connect to this, uh, database now, right? So, uh, so this is kind of, uh, you know, uh, obviously you can do it from the CLI on the terminal, but now you can do it from there. I mean, we have some additional plans like basically drop you directly into the Mongo shell, which we should be able to do because we know this is a MongoDB database and all that, but that's not there today, right? Like it simplifies, the goal is to simplify your life, right? So you can get there. Uh, so we'll close that. Uh, and then uh, if you go to the other tabs, uh, obviously the resource definition is the details, the YAML. I mean, this is the, you know, this is all the objects that has been created because of this database or or somehow connected to this database, like because we are also showing the node where this is deployed. But uh, so this is the, you know, this is the service. This is the object. I mean, this is the pods. So you kind of, you can work through this and see what's there, right? And this is the PVC that's been created. Uh, obviously events as the events. Uh, Monitoring has the monitoring. So let's let it wait a load. And uh, so MongoD stats, I think something is wrong. We don't see the Prometheus here, but we should, we should look into that. Uh, so the security tab, you see all the service account roles, role bindings that has been created specifically for this Mongo. Um, and then, um, yeah, so th those are visible here, right? So we didn't create any certificates. If you create a, like a TLS enabled database, you'll see that here too. Uh, it's kind of, and then the backups, we don't have anything yet. So we'll just pass on that now. Uh, now uh, I want to show you the operations part, right? So I want to show you a quick one because we kind of, we almost uh, taken up the whole hour, but uh, so if you go to the create, So we want to run this uh, upgrade operation. So you can give it a name, uh, tell it an upgrade. And then if it is an upgrade, MongoDB upgrade command. So we want to go to this to 503, right? So we want to upgrade this database. Do a preview. The YAML gets generated for you. Click deploy. And it will start running. It's taking a little longer than I thought, but. Uh, oh, I think I know what's going on. Uh, we have to change it a different name because uh, there's a naming conflict. Yeah. Uh, because. Uh, the, uh, okay. uh, this is something we have to work on, make sure the names are always unique. Yeah, so now it's immediately applied. So as usual, this is going to be refreshing UI. So you can see the database is, uh, you know, going to be updated. Uh, if we go back to the overview page, we should see the pods kind of 
updating or changing, right? The port that's going for this database. Uh, so let it load. I mean, I can also show you from here, like the ports. As you can see, the ports sort of initializing. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, again, it's now running. Uh, so yeah, so it's 47 seconds. If we click on the name of the pod. So as you can see that the containers that this pod has is actually 503. So basically our database has been updated, right? I mean, you can drop into the shell and check it yourself. But I'm going to just not do that for now. I mean, we, we need to get to the end of it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so this is this is kind of the you know so this is this same way you can essentially uh, do other ops requests, right? So you can vertically scale up and down all of that, and and not have to worry about all the YAML format anymore. Uh, Interestingly, the name is not getting selected here. We have to see what's the, that. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I mean, if you select it, like the vertical scaling or reconfigure all the options will be available. And then one last thing I would like to show you is that like, okay, so you have deployed the database, but now you want to make some changes, right? Make, want to make some edits, right? So obviously you can go to the YAML uh, and edit it there directly. But uh, but not always, it's just a single YAML, right? You want to edit various parts of their system and uh, because there's like this backup part, there's the monitoring part, there's the alerts part. So all of that effectively will be editable through this sort of the more kind of advanced edit UI. Uh, so here <clears throat> you will show you the configurations that is currently in use for this database, right? So you saw that this is an R503, MongoD, all of that. If we go next. This is the alerts part. So we already saw that there was a Prometheus uh, uh, alert uh, rule was created. So this is kind of a UI version of that. So we can see that, that this has uh, sort of all these different alerts that has been automatically configured. And if you want, you can kind of go and edit it here. It will also update your YAML directly, but uh, you, I mean, you can leave it sort of the default settings. Frankly, we would like to also learn from you if you find that certain con default configuration should be adjusted so that it is better reflects uh, the production scenario. We would love to have your feedback on that. So th these are the alerts. So this is a standalone database. So we'll just leave it that. Yeah, I can create an ops request. We're not doing that now. Uh, you know, this is, we're not doing any of this. Uh, so if you want to schedule a backup, right? So this is the interesting part. So here uh, we can create a backup configuration and uh, create a backup uh, for that, right? So we can say, okay, I want to store the data uh, in a create new, so let's go create a new one. So when to use AWS S3, uh, because Linode has an object storage service, service which is uh, effectively AWS S3 equivalent. And I'm just uh, typing it up from what I have here, uh, linodeobjects.com, give it a name, stash bucket. So this stuff will, uh, I mean, it's it really coming from stash, right? So 
if your bucket is not there, it will create the bucket. Uh, you can give it a prefix, uh, you know, whatever you like. The region, um, yeah, so actually, uh, well, mixing it up. So it should be there. And the prefix, you can give it what you like, so MGD, data, you can, you know, give it a name. A storage secret, so this is the AWS secret that you need to create ahead of time in your cluster, right? So we already have it one created. I just pick it and you can give it a schedule, right? So this is like every five minutes, take a backup and keep the last five, right? So you just do that. We don't want to uh, optimize or uh, customize it any further, right? You can also change security context and all of that, but we'll just pass on that for now. Uh, this is already configured, right? So we have a monitoring configured. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so we're not changing any of the labels or stuff at this point. I mean, it's all there. So we didn't customize the, customize the service this time around, right? Because it was a just a cluster IP, so there is no service template. And uh, and then it's an end preview. So as you can see that this time when you're going to do the deploy, it is not just going to have the Mongo YAML and the Prometheus YAML, right? Which we haven't really modified any parts. So it's going to be the same thing. But the, there's going to be this repository YAML, right? The stash CRD and the backup configuration that we expect to see for configuring a backup, right? So, so and if we deploy, it is going to create those things. Uh, we have to see what's uh, what's the deal with that. Uh, but if once it's all done, um, if you go to the MongoDBs for a different one, which we already did before, it will have a backup configured, okay? And it will be there. So if we go back to the KubeDB UI, this Mongo standard one. If you go to the backups page, it will kind of show you sort of the configuration that has been done, right? So the labels, uh, you know, the one was the last backup done, when is the upcoming backup, it'll be in four minutes. And uh, what is the size of the repository is a five megabyte. And, and, you know, we got five snapshots. And, and and you can see sort of the, this is the, what's called the backup session objects. So you can see which have been running, the ones that have succeeded. And there's a quite a bit of that uh, because it's a very frequently running. So it's, it's skipping some of that. So with that, uh, I will uh, end my demo today. Uh, as you saw that there are some, uh, you know, uh, still quirks or hiccups here and there in the UI uh, that we have been working on. Uh, the next thing that we've been working on is the, uh, the installer for this, right? So if you want to run on your own environment, uh, we have a, uh, well, uh, it's a kind of a collection of Helm chairs, but uh, that we have, and we're trying to building a UI on top of that. So it's uh, relatively easy to set up because uh, to deploy it, you need some cloud configuration, like, you know, bucket information, DNS information, and all of that. Once provided, you can deploy it in, in, in a standard Kubernetes cluster, right? So there's not a special thing needed. Uh, and um, that's about it. So those are the some things you'll see uh, from us in the near future. And as always, uh, please uh, give us your feedback and uh, we'll have to see you use this and, and you know make life easy for as a KubeDB user. Uh, so if you have any other question at this point, uh, please uh, ask us uh, in the chat and uh, we're happy to answer. Sorry for you know going over time, but it's been a big demo today, so yeah.
So sounds like uh, there are not, not much questions today. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us uh, and uh, we'll be happy to answer. So, so with that, uh, thank you uh, for joining today's uh, demo. Okay, so with this, we are concluding the webinar today. Thank you everyone for your participation. We hope to see you again next time. And our upcoming webinars are already scheduled on our website. Just simply visit appscore.com slash webinar to register. Have a nice day, everyone. Goodbye.